Welcome back to Sabbath Services, brethren. Let's continue on right here in Revelation 13. So let's read about the Vatican. Now, as I pointed out to you with this book, every sex sin is within the clergy of the Catholic Church. I don't know why some people continue in the Catholic Church and they don't understand what's going on. Now, let's continue here in verse 11, Revelation 13. And I saw another beast rising out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, but spoke like a dragon. It looks Christian, but it's not. It claims to be Christian, but it never has been. Now, if you've never watched on Church at Home, the nine-part series I did on Peter was never in Rome. Everything about it is a lie, founded on a lie, perpetuated by lies, and so that's why it's going to be the great religious element in bringing the one world government and one world religion. Okay? And let's see what's going to happen here. Because only those who have the Spirit of God will not be sucked into the system. Okay? So let's read it. He exercises all the authority of the first beast before him, and he causes the earth and those who dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he performs great wonders, so that he even causes fire to come down to the earth from heaven in the sight of men. Okay? That's amazing. Okay? Now then, hold your place here. Come to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And with all of these things going on, then Satan is going to turn everything that he has on those who are in the true church of God. All right, let's pick it up here. Verse 21, Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 21. For then there shall be great tribulation such as not been from the beginning of the world until this time, nor ever shall be again. So we're looking at some terrible times leading up to this. Okay? And if those days had not been limited... Doesn't mean cut short, limited. There would be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be limited. Then if anyone says to you, behold, there is the Christ, the beast. He came back to life. There he is. Or he is there. Do not believe it. For there shall arise false Christ, and it's all the way down through history. Now, if you look up online, those who claim to be Christ in the world today, you'll find a handful of them are there. And they always have followers. Why? Because there are demons that bring followers to them. And then they get hypnotized. See? Remember Jimmy Jones in Guyana? You go back and look at that again. See? Everything that Satan does starts out with a good cause to help people and starts out by using the Bible. That's what Jimmy Jones did but it ended up in suicide and death with cyanide in 
the punch that everybody drank. And I was, as I was watching the, the special on it on American History Channel, when they were drinking the Kool-Aid with the Sinai in it, he was telling them, treat the children kindly. And I thought, how diabolical can Jimmy Jones have been? That is pure Satanism. Okay? So, when these miracles come, people are going to believe it. There shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and they shall present great signs and wonders. Well, look, at why, why, why don't you believe what he did? Look at that great sign and wonder. Well, you say you're a true Christian? Let's see you do something just like that. That sounds exactly like the scribes and Pharisees saying to Jesus, oh, give us a sign and we'll believe you. Or come down off the cross and then we'll believe you. See? Even if they give it. How do you know who serves God in truth and those who don't? The ones, as we read where? Back in Revelation what? 12. That keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. See? And unless we have that, now notice what Jesus said. Show great signs and wonders in order to deceive the elect, if possible. See? Now, it could happen. That's why we need to stay close to God. All right, back to Revelation 13. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by means of the wonders that were given to him in the sight of the beast. Okay. Saying to those who dwell on the earth that they should make an image for the beast which had the wound by the sword and yet was alive. And was given to him power to give life to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast could speak and he causes everyone who would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And he causes. Now this goes back to the beast. And he causes all the small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free and the bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Okay. And, verse 17, so that no one may have the ability to buy or sell unless he had to mark the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay. Now, I need to get more facts on it, but, let me read you a report here. Prophecy rages to reality as Pope and Rothschild. Rothschild. Now, I went online and saw this, but I need to get all of the things that are, are behind it because this would just a flash to look at. Okay? But the representative of Rothschild was one of the daughters of the Rothschild going to the Vatican and to the Pope, okay? As the Pope and Rothschild form Council for Inclusive Capitalism. Now, what is that? That's the World Economic Forum, okay? Inclusive capitalism, which means everybody's going to get the mark of the beast 
and everybody's included. And it's going to be what you've heard spouted off by all of these progressives that we ought to have a set income for every person in the world. Huh. And another detail I already mentioned is you won't be able to own property. You won't be able to own cars, but you can use them. Okay. And then all that money goes back to the rich people who already have control of all the money. And now they have total power over all human beings. Okay. So I'm going to have to get all of the facts on this and what happened with it, but that was really something. Okay. So that fits right in with it here. Now, here's something I thought of when I read this. Okay. Years ago, this was clear back way before Herbert Armstrong came into the Church of God. Church of God's Seventh Day had a booklet out, which he reproduced, by the way, entitled, Mark of the Beast is Already Here. And what did they name the Mark of the Beast? Sunday Keeping. Oh, now, that's something. Nobody stopped to think about it, because when you read it here, see, verse 17, so that no one may have the ability to buy or sell unless he has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. See, and that means the impossibility a buying and selling. Well, if Sunday were the mark of the beast, could you not still buy on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and for Sunday goers on Saturday? Correct. So could it be that coupled with the 1975 in prophecy and there is a way of escape and telling people that if you join this church, Worldwide Church of God, you will escape the tribulation. Huh? That brought a lot of people into the church. Because there were a lot of Sunday keepers who said, whoa, boy, if this is the mark of the beast, I don't want to keep Sunday anymore. So they were more willing to keep the Sabbath. Okay. And then when they were told it's all going to end in 1975, and all of us old timers remember that, right? Well, it didn't. And they had a hard time explaining that away because we were supposed to flee to a place of safety in 1972. But that didn't happen. Yet Herbert Armstrong said the week before that first week in January when we were supposed to go, he said, it still may happen. So that week came, and during Sabbath services, right in the auditorium in Pasadena, he admitted that it wasn't going to happen, but God has opened a great door. We're able to put ads in the Reader's Digest. Huh. Okay. Now, how much did those two things erode the faith of a lot of people so when all of the corruption became known and they began to go back to Sunday keeping, that a lot of people just left worldwide. Where are they? We don't know. We don't know what happened. But you see, it shows this. You can't base fulfillment of prophecy just on what you think. You have to see the evidence in Scripture 
and see the evidence take place. So that's why with this one here, daughter of Rothschild goes to work something out with the Pope. I wonder what they're trying to work out. Have you ever wondered or have you ever seen the different things that they have uncovered concerning the Vatican and the Vatican Bank? A lot of those things have been shown. And the Vatican Bank was laundering all kinds of mafia money. Huh. What's going to happen now? See? But what we're finding is this. The beast power must make alliance with the Pope. And the Pope must bring all religions under the same tent. They're not going to join each other, but they will acquiesce and accept each other. Okay? And the beast is going to bring all governments under his suzerainty. The false prophet will bring all religions under his suzerainty, except the true church of God, as we have covered. See? So this is going to be something. But it's amazing that all of this information is coming out. And that now we're able to see these things and put it all together. All right? Now, I would like to finish off by going to Revelation 11. Because there are still some ministers and people in the churches of God who say they're either going to direct the two witnesses or that they are one of the two witnesses, like one man said, well, I'll reveal who the other one is a little later. Well, that happened to be his wife. Huh. And people in the churches of God believed them. See? So we need to ask the question, will you believe some of these claims even from ministers in the church, just because they're ministers in the church? Well, we all have to answer that before God, right? So let's look at the two witnesses here, okay? Now this is going to come. We're looking for when they will start building the temple. Now, here's another thing about the temple and where it's going to be built that you ought to know. It is well known where the original temple was and the temple that was the second temple but was destroyed in 70 AD. Now, if you don't have our DVD on it, we'll send it to you. Okay? Now, Here's the thing with the temple and the Jews. You need to understand this. Until the leading rabbi of Judaism says, here's where to build the temple, the Jews will always think that the temple is to be built where the mosque of Omar is. But that cannot be. And just like the Wailing Wall, where the Jews go to pray. See? What's over the wall? The dome of the Mosque of Omar. And they're praying to the wall, supposedly praying to God. And they don't know that the real place for building the temple is down south of that and that where the Mosque of Omar is was Fort Antonio, which was 
where the legion of soldiers occupying Jerusalem lived. And that was never destroyed. But where the temple was, it was destroyed exactly as Jesus said. There was not one stone left upon another. So why am I saying all of this? Because there is no minister who's going to go to Jerusalem and tell the Jews where to build the temple. Because the Jews, even if it is correct information, will never accept it from a Gentile, period. We have to come from the leading rabbi. So God will have to make it known to the leading rabbi where to build a temple so it will be in the right location. And that hasn't happened yet. Okay? Now, just to show you an example of what the Jews did, remember Herbert Armstrong? He'd go over to Jerusalem, and he had lots of friends there in Jerusalem, and he gave $200,000 to build a park. Okay? Now, Evelyn Gardner, who was a member in our church, has since waiting for the resurrection now in the grave, she would make trips over to Jerusalem and try and find that park. So she finally found it. And what did she find? She found a small little memorial, a little tiny patch of land with a little plaque on the memorial saying, donated by Herbert W. Armstrong. So that little patch of land was the park, which shows, for example, that the Jews will never accept any truth from any Gentile, but will accept their money. Okay? Now let's read about the two witnesses. And we will see that they are not from the church. Verse 1, Revelation 11. Then the angel gave me a measuring rod like a staff, saying, Arise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship in it. So this shows it must be rebuilt. But leave out the court that is within the temple area and do not measure it because it's given up to the Gentiles and they shall trample upon it, upon the holy city for 42 months. That's the last three and a half years. And I will give power to my two witnesses who gives power. I, God, right? Not a minister in the church. How presumptuous can that be? I will give power to my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and sixty days clothed in sackcloth. Okay? Now, we know that the two witnesses are the first two raised from the dead. So, in order to find out when this will begin, you have to count from the last Pentecost before the return of Christ, because Pentecost is the resurrection, and they'll be resurrected then, and you count backward 1260 days, and you come to a time just after the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? So they will be raised up sometime during that, if that is correct. All right? And they will have a ministry of 1260 days. Now notice verse 4. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the God of the earth. All right? This identifies them. And we will go to the book of Zechariah and read about them. See? Now, notice the two olive trees 
and the two lampstands, and they are filled with the power of God and the olive oil coming from the olive tree is symbolic of the power of the Holy Spirit that God is going to give them for their ministry. Because look at what they can do, see? And these two men will be the most powerful men on the face of the earth. And what's that going to do to the beast and the false prophet? <laughs> like Moses and Aaron going to Pharaoh. Pharaoh couldn't do anything to stop them. Okay? Now let's read on. And if anyone attempts to harm them, fire will, will go out of their mouths and devour their enemies. That's going to be something. Think about what the nightly news is going to say at that time. Huh? Oh, these two witnesses, wow, they're so powerful. Look at what they can do. And this man tried to come up and do something to him, and I'm standing right here next to where the ashes of his body is because fire came out of the mouth, one of the two prophets, and burned him to a crisp. Okay. For if anyone attempts to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have authority to shut heaven so that no rain may fall during the days of their prophecy. And they have authority over the waters to turn them into blood and to smite the earth with every plague as often as they will. Now, that's quite a thing, isn't it? Every plague of God. See? Now, let's go back to Zechariah 3 and 4. And here is the prophecy. Now, I want you to read all of the book of Zechariah because you will find in there that there are a lot of places showing the repentance of the Jews in the end time. Okay, And it's going to be something, because when the two witnesses come on the scene, okay, Zechariah 3 and 4, there are going to be a lot of Jews who will really repent. And the third Elijah is going to be the one who's going to baptize him, not the two witnesses. Okay, Now, chapter 3. Okay, let's pick it up here, verse 1. So the conversion of the first one is absolutely instantaneous. And a great rescue from Satan the devil. Zechariah 3 and verse 1. And he showed me Joshua the high priest. Now, the type of that was Joshua the high priest when they were building the second temple during the days of Ezra and Nehemiah. Okay. Standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said to Satan, May the Lord rebuke you, Satan. May even the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked out of the fire? Okay, this is when God is going to make it known in Jerusalem. Right here, okay. His power. And a brand plucked out of the fire shows he had so many sins that it was a miraculous thing that he was transformed, okay. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take the filthy garments from off him. And he said to him, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you, and I will clothe you with ceremonial robes. So he will be given those robes to begin with. 
But when he becomes one of the two witnesses, it will be Sekla. Okay. And I said, let them set a clean mite around his head. So they set a clean mite around his head and clothed him with the garments. Now, this is probably at the time that they dedicate the temple. Okay. And this is before, way before the last three and a half years. And the angel of the Lord stood by, and the angel of the Lord charged Joshua, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, instead of all your traditions, and if you will keep my charge, what I tell you to do, then you shall also judge my house, and shall also keep my courts. Now this was for Joshua at the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, but a prophecy for one of the two witnesses, as we will see. And I will give you places to walk among those who stand by. Hear now, O Joshua, high priest, you and your fellows who sit before you, for they are men wondered at, for behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch, the coming of Jesus Christ. Okay? And behold, the stone that I have set before Joshua, okay, on one side are seven eyes, and behold, I will engrave an engraving upon it, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, you shall call each man to his neighbor and sit under the vine and under the fig tree, showing that this goes right into the millennium. See? And what's going to happen to one of the, or to both of the two witnesses? They'll be raised from the dead. Now, they'll probably be instrumental in help raising up Judea again when Christ returns. Okay? Chapter 4. And the angel of the Lord talked with me, who talked with me, came again and wakened me as a man who's wakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, What do you see? And I said, I see, and behold, a lampstand, all of it gold and a bowl on its top. This is not the one that's in the temple. The one in the temple was not built like this. You go read it. There were seven lampstands on a candelabra. There were seven, okay? And it didn't have anything over it. Okay? And seven lamps upon it and seven pipes to the seven lamps on its top, and two olive trees beside it, okay? One on the right side of the bowl, the other on the left side of the bowl, okay? Two olive trees, all right? Keep that in mind. We'll see that in Revelation 11 in just a minute, okay? And I answered and spoke with the angel who talked with me, saying, what are these, my Lord? Then the angel who I, who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spoke to me, saying, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Now, who was Zerubbabel? Zerubbabel was the son of Shelatiel, who was the governor of Judea. So what do we have here? We have the high priest and the governor. Okay? This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. All right? Now think about this. Two witnesses will directly confront the beast and the false prophet. Okay? Just the two of them. That's all that God is going to use at that time. Okay? Not by might nor by, 
power, but by my spirit, which comes from what? From the olive oil, the power of God to do what Revelation 11 says? To call down every plague anywhere at any time, whenever they choose. Okay. Who are you, O Grey Mountain? That's the beast, the one world government. Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the head of the stone, shouting, Grace, grace unto it. Now, who is the head of the stone? Okay, Christ. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Now that's a dual prophecy. One, in putting the foundation and building the second temple during the days of Ezra. Number two, laying the foundation during the end time. Okay. For who has despised the day of small things? Now, you can't get any smaller than two men, right? Yes. For they shall rejoice and see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. These seven are the seven eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Now, we find that in Revelation 1, Revelation 3, Revelation 5. Seven eyes of God, okay? So they're going to be right there. I don't know how that's going to interface with the two witnesses. It would, we can't answer that right now. Verse 11, And I answered and said to him, What are these two olive trees on the right side of the lampstand and on its left side? What are they? Because this olive, these two olive trees and the lampstand are all connected together. And I answered again and said to him, what are the two olive branches besides the two golden pipes emptying the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. And he said, Verse 14, these are the two anointed ones who stand by the God or the Lord of the whole earth. Okay? Now, does this sound like a minister, a pipsqueak little old minister like we all are compared to what this is? Appoint the two witnesses? No. No. They're going to be chosen directly by God. Now let's come back to Revelation 11, okay? And let's see that that last verse 14 identifies the two witnesses as the high priest from the coming temple and the governor of Judea, okay? Whoever that may be. And the high priest will be of the house of Aaron, and the governor of Judea will be of the line of David. You wait and see. Okay, so let's read it. Let's pick it up here, verse 4. It names them specifically. These are the two olive trees. Where did we read that? Zechariah 4 the two olive trees, and the two lampstands that stand before the God of the earth. The full power of God is going to be given to them to do everything they need to do to resist the Pope and the beast. Now, this is going to be something. I mean, what a battle this is going to be. Remember, they can't kill him. They probably say, well, get the troops out there. Let's kill him. 
nothing will kill them. See? For 1260 days. Okay? Here's what happens to them. We'll read it again, verse 5. If anyone attempts to harm them, fire will go out of their mouths and destroy their enemies. For if anyone attempts to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have authority to shut heaven so that no rain may fall in the days of their prophecy. They have authority over the waters to turn them into blood and to smite the earth with every plague as often as they will. Okay. Nowhere does it say that a minister of God, not David Peck, nor Gerald Flurry, will have anything to do with the two witnesses. Now, when they've completed their testimony, okay, the beast who ascends out of the abyss, showing that the whole satanic system over the whole world will make war against them, will overcome them, and will kill them. Okay? And they're going to think, after all that has been done for these 1260 days, now we can get things going again. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. That's what God thinks of it right now. It's a terrible mess, a terrible place. Where also our Lord was crucified. Then those of the peoples and tribes and languages and nations shall see their bodies three and a half days. It'll be on every cell phone, every television, everywhere for they will not allow their bodies to be put into tombs. And all those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and will make merry, send gifts to one another, because these two prophets had tormented those who dwell on the earth. Okay? That's the two witnesses. Then after three and a half days, God resurrects them from the dead, and what? They send right into heaven. Last two martyred, first two resurrected. Okay, so that, ans that answers the question, who are the two witnesses? So we've covered a lot of ground today, but these things are going to happen, and it's just right in front of us how quickly or how far away we don't know. But this gives us the understanding and knowledge we need so we won't be deceived. So until next Sabbath, brethren, so long, everyone.